Okay, so this is the second video in section 2.7. So if you'll go down to um, where it talks about symmetry, this is gonna be right after the reflections. Now, I need to warn you, if you've been copying notes or printing out your notes, um, I really didn't like the order of the original set of notes that I gave you, so you might have to um, pause the video for a minute and look for this particular table. Everything that you see on the screen um, is going to be in your notes somewhere. I might have just rearranged it, so you might have to go find it. All right, so this is, um, I'm going to just give you the summary of tests for symmetry, and then we'll walk through how to use um, these tests. So um, first thing is, is that if we have symmetry with respect to the x-axis, now you'll notice that I've got an example down here, and you can see that this guy is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. In other words, the x-axis is my mirror, okay? So we have symmetry with respect to the x-axis. The test that we're going to run for this is that all of my um, y's are going to be replaced with a negative y. If I do that and my equation remains unchanged, then I have symmetry with respect to the x-axis. This is also going to, um, you're going to realize here that this is not a function. And you can tell that by looking at um, this guy. It does not pass the vertical line test, which is something that we discussed in section 2.3. All right, if I have symmetry with respect to the y-axis, then what I'll need to do is I'll need to take all of my x's and replace them with negative x's. If I do that and my equation remains unchanged, then I have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. An example would be something like my parabola. Um, not all of my parabolas, but this particular parabola has symmetry with respect to the y-axis. The y-axis acts as a mirror. This also happens to be known um, as uh, an even function, an even function. Um, and then lastly, if I have symmetry with respect to the origin, then the test that I'll run is going to be that I will I can replace x with negative x and I can replace y with negative y. If I do both of those things and my equation remains unchanged, then I have symmetry with respect to the origin. Now, this one's a little different as far as it doesn't have a mirror per se. So what you would want to do is you're looking at a graph to be able to tell if it has symmetry with respect to the origin. Take your paper, turn it upside down, rotate it 180 degrees. When you rotate it, if you have the same graph that you started with, then this has symmetry with respect to the origin. Um, this is also going to be considered an odd function. All right, so what we want to do next is I want to just teach you how to test for symmetry. Okay, and um, actually, I'm sorry, I, I circled too much there. I'm really only going to be testing for x-axis and y-axis symmetry. Okay, and so I'm going to try to leave this um, part of the screen showing, at least for the first two examples that I run for you. So um, notice that in part A of my example, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to test for symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So that means I'm going to take all the x's and replace them with negative x's. So I took my original equation. The x's got replaced with negative x's. And my question to myself, first question is, can I clean it up? And there's nothing I can do to clean it up. The second question I ask is, is my equation unchanged? Is it the same equation I started with? Well, no, it's not the same equation I started with. So then we would say this guy does not have um, symmetry with respect to the y-axis. All right, so then let's test for symmetry with respect to the x-axis. So we're gonna take all of our y's, replace them with negative y's. Well, automatically, I know um, when I do this that the absolute value of negative y is the same thing as the absolute value of a positive y. 
So in this case, yes, I have symmetry with respect to the x-axis because my um, original equation and my new equation, it's unchanged. They're the same equation. All right, let's go over to part B. The y-axis test here, um, first thing that we'll do is we'll take all of our x's and replace with negative x's. And we like to clean this up. So when we clean this up, we know that the absolute value of negative x is the same thing as the absolute value of a positive x. And so yes, this has symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Moving to the x-axis test, let's replace all of our y's with negative y's. And um, the only thing I could do here is take the, the negative to the right side of the equal sign and if I do that, notice that um, I have to distribute that negative. This is not the same as the original equation, so no, I do not have symmetry with respect to the x-axis. All right, let's go ahead to part C. And on this one, I can't show the, the box, so you'll have, you have it on your paper, hopefully. The y-axis test, the first thing that we're going to do is replace all of our x's with negative x's. Let's take the time to um, clean that up. And so this guy is gonna become a negative two X and these two will remain unchanged. And we notice that no, um, this equation is not the same as this equation. So we do not have symmetry with respect to the Y axis. If I replace all of my Y's with a negative Y and clean it up, that's gonna be two X plus Y equals six. And that's also not the same thing. So we would say that this one has neither y-axis or x-axis um, symmetry. For part D, if we replace all of the x's with negative x's, we know that a negative squared becomes positive. That's the same thing as an x squared. So yes, this one passes the y-axis test. So it has symmetry with respect to the y-axis. If we run the x-axis test, um, again, my negative squared are going to be positive, so this also has x-axis symmetry. These are a little more difficult to um, graph on the graphing calculator because the first thing you need to do is to solve for y. You would need to get y alone, um, and so, um, so it makes it just a little bit more tedious to graph these on the calculator. All right, look at example number four. Let's test for symmetry with respect to the origin. So once again, have out this guy. Notice that what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take not just one or the other, but we're gonna take all of our X's and replace with negative X. Our Y's are gonna be placed, replaced with negative Y's. And so the first thing that we'll do is take our X out, replace with negative X. You can see that right here. Take our Y out, replace with negative Y. Let's clean this up. So a negative x times a negative x times a negative x is going to be a negative x cubed. And a negative x cubed times negative 2 is going to be a positive 2x cubed. Um, and so um, that's what you see there. And then that negative on the y, let's move that over to the other side. So that'll be a y equals negative 2x cubed. And all of a sudden, you'll notice that my... Um, original equation and my new equation match. So this does have symmetry with respect to the origin. Um, and then if you'll um, do the same thing with part B, we have um, both X and Y are replaced with a negative X and a negative Y. Um, doing the math here, a negative two times a negative X times a negative X is gonna be a negative two X squared move the, the negative in front of the y over to the right side and you'll have a y equals a positive 2x squared and no, that's not the same. So it does not have origin symmetry. Um, let's go ahead and talk about um, even and odd functions. And what I have here, this may not actually be in your notes because this is something that I created myself um, and decided to put it in because I feel like it's important. So, um, so you'll want to uh, take a look. Now, what I have, first of all, is I've got an f of x. I'm going to compare it to an f of negative x, and I'm going to compare that to a negative f of x, okay? And so basically what you notice here is that on this one, I'm making all of my x's negative, and on this one, I'm making all of my y's negative, okay? So that's essentially what we have here. 
And um, so what I've got, let me go ahead and just um, take away this, this first part. If f of x and f of negative x, if those two are equal to each other, then I will find that it is an even function. Now let's go back real quick. Can you rewind? Remember that an even function is the same thing as having y-axis symmetry. So then let's add that to the notes. If, if these two guys are equal to each other, not only is it an even function, but we can say it also has y-axis symmetry. Um, and then likewise, if these two are equal to each other, the f of negative x and the negative uh, f of x, if those two are equal to each other, then what we have is an odd function. And if you'll go back up to that previous chart, you remember that an odd function is the same as origin symmetry. So really this test here can be used for both um, symmetry as well as evens and odds. So let's use this test. I actually think it's um, slightly easier than what I did with you before, but either one is gonna work. All right, so, um, and let's see, let me see if I can keep this showing at the same time. So for the even test, I need to be looking at the original function. So for part A, here's the original function. I wanna compare the original function to f of negative x. So I wanna take all of my x's out and replace them with negative x's. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. All of, my all of my x's came out and I'm replacing them with negative x's. And then I'm gonna clean this up. And so you'll see that when I clean this up, I'm gonna get a negative x to the fifth minus two x cubed plus three x. And so the question is, are these two equal to each other? Is this guy equal to this guy? And we say, no, they're not the same thing. So then we're gonna we're gonna say uh, uh, this does this is not an even function, but because it's not even, I also know that it does not have y-axis symmetry. So then let's go to the odd part of the test. The odd part of the test says, hey, take what you already found. So that's this guy right here. Compare it to the opposite of the original or the negative f of x. All right. So what we're gonna do. Let's take the original and get its exact opposite, all right? So the exact opposite of the original, you'll notice that I have a negative original. I'm gonna take every single one of the original pieces and make them the exact opposite. So you'll notice that my signs are all opposite. And then when I compare these two with each other, I notice, hey, they're the same thing. So then this is going to be an odd function. We could also say it has origin symmetry. Let's go to part B. Let's start running the even test. And so we're going to, once again, let's take all of our x's out and replace them with a negative x. Let's clean that up. And when I clean it up, you'll notice that, hey, the original function and the new guy, they match. It's even. Now let me tell you something. If you find that a function is even, it can't be odd at the same time. It's impossible, okay? An even function cannot be an odd function at the same time. It's not going to be possible. Now notice I'm talking about functions. The reason that we could have something like this, where both the y-axis symmetry and the x-axis symmetry um, test passed, is because this was a circle. It wasn't a function to begin with. Okay, so yes, I can have y-axis symmetry and x-axis symmetry at the same time um, because x-axis is not a function, but I can't have an odd and an even at the same time. That's absolutely going to be impossible. All right, one more example of this. So let's run the even test. So we're going to take all of our x's out, replace with negative x's, and let's clean that up. And we'll notice that, hey, this guy is not the same as the original, the middle term is not the same. And then if we run our odd test, we'll say that, ah, oh, okay, so our odd test, when I make 
in the original function, when I make every single piece of the original function negative, hey, that's not the same as this one. Now, don't forget, these are the two. Come back to your test. These are the two that you're testing to see if they are equal to each other. All right. And so we see that those aren't the same either. So in this case, not only is it not an even function, it's also not an odd function. Now, let's make this even a little bit easier when I'm looking at an equation. If you have a function and it's defined by a polynomial where x, all of my x's only, only, only have even powers, then what we're going to find is that um, it's going to be an even function. I'm in the same vein if um, I only, only, only have odd powers on my function that what we'll see is that the function is going to be an odd function. And go back up to these. Um, we'll notice that in this one, I only have odd powers. It ended up being an odd function. This one, I only have even powers. And you say, but wait a second, that second one doesn't have an even power, but actually it does. Remember, this is x to the zero because anything to the zero power is always one. So yeah, zero is an even number. This one did have only even powers. Um, and on this one, it had a mixture. It had two of them with even powers, but then the one in the middle had an odd power. So that one was um, neither one. So that definitely is going to work. Okay, so I'm going to um, stop this video here and stay tuned for the third video.